Billy Barnwell's Favorite Friends is a feature-length dark comedy about a dysfunctional children's theater troupe. Dad? Who's Billy Barnwell? Billy Barnwell is the title character of a beloved children's story that these screwy actors are performing. Never heard of him. That's because he's fictional. The idea for the story is based on Charlotte's Web. Is that it? No, this is a prop. Billy Barnwell is a little boy who loses his mother and goes to live with his grandmother on her farm. In answer to a wish that he makes, he miraculously learns to speak to the animals and learns how they depend on each other in times of loss and sorrow. Dad, where's the conflict? Well, as a consequence of learning to talk to the animals, he loses his ability to communicate with human beings. I sometimes have that exact same problem. Well, that's exactly the point. We all have trouble communicating. And the people in this children's theater group, they're terrible at it. Ah, oh, I'm beginning to see some parallelism. Yeah, and there's irony, and drama, and romance, and comedy, and there's bar fights, and religious revelations, and female impersonators, and bipolar episodes. Oh, and there's a chicken with anger management problems. Sex? Some. The duck is an infomaniac. So, where do you get the idea for this crazy story? I used to travel with a children's theater group just like the one in the story. Really? Yep. That's how I met your mother. Can I play Billy? No, you're a girl. And we're going to get actors from Hollywood and other places to play those roles. Like George Clooney? I wish. You see, we're in pre-production now, so we're making this Kickstarter campaign to raise enough money to attract larger investors and some big-name talent. Plus, we gotta pay the crew, locations, costumes, and we gotta feed everybody. We're thinking modified low budget. Got any allowance left? What do I get? Check out the premiums page. We're being pretty generous. And we gotta look out for each other after all. That's what the whole movie's about, right? Will you cluck like a chicken? If I thought it would help us raise 10 grand, I'd grow feathers at them. Night, night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And no horsing around. Save it for the rap party. Welcome back to What's Going On Seaville. You just saw a teaser for Billy Barnwell's favorite friends. Great. Wasn't it too. fabulous? And now, of course, we have Brian Weimer and Trevor Pajiski in the house again, our favorite guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a really cool teaser. Whose idea was that? Thanks. Um, fight, you. fight. No, 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 <laughs> was the, you know, kid. the kid just said, I want to go do this. It, it's, uh, I think the... the Interesting thing about the teaser, as I think is happening with the entire film that we're trying to make here, is that it's sort of this collaborative process where I have an idea, I write something, I send it to Brian, he goes, that's good, but what about this, what about that? And, and we just kind of, I think we've been kind of co-writing things via email back and forth where we sort of tweak each other's ideas. And so it was really kind of a collaborative uh, process that, that started. And I think even Maya probably added something of her own, uh, you know, in the shooting of it. And Ma Maya, who played Trevor's daughter in the film, is actually Brian's daughter, so it's kind of all in the family. <laughs> it's weird like that. <laughs> so Trevor, when did, when did uh, Billy Barnwell originate as a, in the script form? Um, I started writing it, I guess, last summer. I think I st really started writing it uh, shortly after we shot uh, Danger Zombies Run. Um, showed Brian the first couple scenes. Um, we both kind of thought it would it, it could be a good film, so I just I just kept on with it uh, over three or four months. The first draft was really didn't take a lot of time to write, uh, mainly because I'd been thinking about it for you know ten years. Uh, <laughs> so the first draft was pretty easy. Since then, I think it's in version five or six. Something like that. So the, we kind of keep getting the weed whacker out and good. Think, nah, you can whittle it down to its little bare essentials, get the good jokes. Right. And then I think one of the challenges, too, is because some of it is, is based on Trevor's life, is to get more distance there because, I don't know, you, to, to build those kind of moments and things, to, to take the reality but then you have to translate it and condense it in a way because something that took a week to transpire, you have to have it take place in a shorter amount of time. And uh, it's hard when you're that close to it. Right. And saying goodbye to some of your favorite parts, huh? That's when you just slap them. That's, well, <laughs> well the, the, the hardest part is, is that he, you know, in most cases, 
as resistant as I am, you know, I go, no, I can't take that out. That's the part that actually happened. But you know, <laughs> when I think about it, it's like, well, you know, it was monumental to me, but right. but to an, an audience, you know, who who wasn't there, who hadn't lived my life, it may not relate as well as something like it that's a little more relatable to everybody. And so it's, it it's, it, and it is, it's like you said, I mean, it's a matter of sort of being able to remove yourself from the true part to make it more entertaining and, a, and, a, and more relatable to everybody who sees it. Which is probably why you guys are good collaborators that way. Uh, because you, it was originally a, a play. I mean, you were going to do it in a sort of a play, weren't you? Was that well, the well, it, it actually, the, the story itself uh, is sort of based on experiences I had traveling with a children's theater uh, group, uh, as, the, as the little teaser film points out. Um, and it was... The, the, the play itself, the, the original children's story, sort of was a way to kind of tell that children's story that happened in real life in a, in a more fictional way. So the script was a script, but then there came this children's story that I wanted to write that went with the script. And so it's really, it's become this movie about a play that was based <laughs> on a children's story that never actually existed. And so now we're gonna do it all, because the point is we have to create a book, a real book, Try to get it in the festival of the book. Uh, we're going to create a stage play based on the book. Try to do the stage play. Wow. Try to take it to some schools, and then do the movie that is the incorporation of all those things. And we're even inventing the author because it's all kind of based on some sort of like Charlotte's Web sort of a thing. Yeah. And so it's to say, well, who wrote this thing? Go create a fake Wikipedia page. Go create the whole Fantastic. history behind <gasps> who this. You know what this beloved story oh, I was. I love it. That's great promotions too. That sort of takes the Blair Witch Project and blows it out of the exactly. water. Exactly. Well, because you're the hitting same them thing, from yeah, so many yeah, angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fun, and it's also to involve you know everybody like yourself. Like we're gonna have a little audition coming up to uh, see what actually we can do it right now. I, uh, you guys can can try because uh, do your lamb. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you oh. go. There you go. You're, you're, you're in chicken. Oh, uh, how, about, chicken. how about a cow? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. That's a good cow. There you go. Is there, is there a cow in it? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, but, but for you, we'll write one in. The cow cameo. See, it pays to have your own show. the cow role. <laughs> well, that takes me to one, one of my questions, actually. Um, so when you start the process, after you've done all this amazing stuff, Obviously, the process of casting and crew and all of that and locations. Are you planning to do it mostly here mm -hmm. as far as locations go and use crew here? I know that you have aspirations to try to get some professional talent. I know there's some professional talent at, at home in Charlottesville, but New York, maybe L.A.? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we're going to definitely be working with the Virginia Film Office. They're really cooperative, helping us find things. Um, and to hire as many Virginians as possible to use Virginia locations, um, but there is an element of it to make it appealing to a distributor yes. to say, okay, who can we get? What name can we get? Uh, you know, who out there, if they read the script, are they going to say, okay, for this? And that's part of our fundraising is to raise, we have to raise about $150,000, wow. which is a, a pretty sizable chunk of that will go to about two actors who are going to bring in from somewhere that somebody's going to say, oh, so and so's in this movie. I know them, and we're gonna, they're going to be in town, staying at the Omni probably or somewhere. That's exciting. Um, so yeah, it's it's to bring. I mean, what Evan Almighty and all that sort of to to bring that sort of notion of, it's it's all those aspects of Hollywood, but also all the stuff that we do because yeah. we've built with this filmmakers republic thing all these great local resources, and it's our opportunity to really put those to the test and create a project that is of total Hollywood value. That's, that's wonderful. And, and if you were looking at two sort of named actors, that gives a lot of people in Virginia the opportunity to be part yeah. of it, because it is quite a, a large cast and right. lots of exterior people or whatever. So that's really good to hear. 